Chapter 21, A Spirit of Worlds. Hey, they're back! Said Merrick from the stairs, shouting over the sound of the Ark cycling up. Leo rested on the sofa in the living room using his suit jacket as a blanket. Otto walked over and tapped him on the shoulder to wake him up from his long rest. Violet, they're back! Hollered Otto towards the kitchen. Glad that took less time than I expected. They still have three hours left. Leo yawned and sat up. He rolled his suit jacket into a ball and placed it on the couch to rest his head on. Oh, have them come back in three hours in that case. Otto walked over and tipped the couch over, forcing Leo to roll over onto the floor. Viola hurried with her icing-covered cake in hand towards the stair doorway. The light from the arc filled the basement in its radiant glow as Merrick hurried upstairs. Otto stood waiting near his doorway, seeing the shadows of someone coming through the arc below. A small shadow ran in through the basement and scurried up the stairs. The shadow leapt at Otto's waist as it reached the top of the stairs, forcing him to the ground. The hairy black and white dog continued to lick him with its rough dog tongue across his cheeks. The others watched Otto get knocked to the ground as two human-like shadows walked up the stairs with the arc light fading behind them. Allie adjusted the goggles over her forehead to suddenly see the celebration that awaited her and Sim at the top of the stairs. Surprise! Surprise! Hollered Vila, Leo, and Merrick. Otto still struggled to protect his face on the floor, trying to push the dog away from him. The foyer was decorated with a few small blue and red paper streamers and balloons tied to the base of the stairs and dining room chairs. Wow! Replied Allie, looking around at the few decorations with a smile on her face. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Someone help me? Said Otto, trying to push the border collie off his chest. Oh, shoot. Sorry, Otto. He's really friendly. Said Allie as she hurried over to pull the dog away from him. I can see that. Otto replied, clambering to his feet. How long you all been waiting? Asked Sim, taking his goggles off from around his neck. Uh, too long. Said Leo, yawning. Uh, it's all probably cold by now. Uh, and I'm starving. I ate, why didn't you? Asked Merrick. What? You said wait for them! No, I, I said we could wait. There was no telling how long they would be. Why did you think we went and got decorations? Ah, great. Replied Leo in a hungry and angry voice. Relax. I'll go heat it up. Sam and Allie haven't eaten either. Said Viola, walking over to Allie, handing her the cake. Welcome back, dears. And welcome to our little family, Allison. Thanks, said Allie, taking the cake from her. Allie looked down to see the cake decorated with a thin layer of frosting, spelling out the words, Welcome, Allie, written in red and white icing. Allie felt thankful, but conflicted hearing Vila's friendly greeting using the term family so loosely. She offered everyone her best look of appreciation. Where's the traveler? Asked Otto, striding over to Sim with a concerned look. Sim nodded down at the dog, who sat on the floor next to Allie. The dog? Hmm? Replied Sim, hanging up his backpack on the stair banister next to him. You sure? Positive. Feel more like I'm at home every day. You guys are just like my daughters bringing home that mouse they found outside thinking it was a hamster. What? You guys just decide finding animals is better than finding people? What's his name? Asked Merrick, leaning down to pet the black and white canine traveler. We don't know. He never had a name tag. Probably lost it when he jumped worlds. Oh, how about, uh, Buddy? Suggested Leo. Allie, Merrick, and Viola all looked at him, all sharing the same unenthused expression. Leo looked at their faces, clearly unsure of any other good names. His shoulders drooped. Um, what about Dublin? Suggested Merrick looking down at the dog. The dog showed all his teeth with a panting smile. Dublin, questioned Allie. Well, sure. My family lived in Ireland for a few years when I was a kid, and my brother and I always talked about how we wanted to name a dog Dublin after our roots. He's a lucky dog after all since you two managed to find him. So why not give him a name with some luck of the Irish behind it? Besides, he's a border collie. Irish farmers use them as sheep herders all the time. The dog wagged its tail. Merrick leaned down to pet him as Allie pondered the name. Yeah, I guess that's a pretty cool name for him. He did push a guy into a buffet table who was trying to kill someone. Sounds like a good luck charm to me. He did what? Otto asked, wiping dog hair from his shirt. 
Tell us about it over dinner, dear. Vila marched toward the kitchen as Merrick shook his head at Allie, expressing almost a desperate look for her not to eat Vila's cooking. Leo snickered and followed them. How do you two manage to find your lucky traveler? Asked Otto. Sim grabbed Otto by the arm, waiting for the others to clear the room before pulling him away to the living room. Otto watched everyone walk away, then turned back toward him. It was Erlen, muttered Sim quietly. Otto's smile turned serious. He looked at Sim, clearly hoping he was joking. Run that by me again? Erlen was there. When I said you needed to move on, I didn't mean start making jokes about it. Seriously, though, kid, how did you find the dog? No, I'm not joking. We saw him, living and in the flesh. Maybe it was someone you just thought looked like Erland. You think I'd mistake the man I looked up to for half my life, like my own father, for someone else? He's dead, kid. Like, dead dead. Long gone, never coming back dead. So dead we didn't even get to bury a body. You can't get any deader than that. I'm not the only one who saw him, though. Allie saw him, too. I had to ask her for confirmation that I wasn't losing it. I couldn't believe it myself. Otto looked away for a minute, presumably reflecting on the strange news. He say anything to you? No, not a word. He just waved at us with that cheesy, bearded smile of his. I could practically hear that Australian voice of his lecturing me in my head. He's the one who pointed the dog out to us. I think I even saw him once before that. He picked me up after I fell into the crowd. Only his face was covered. Sim stood silently for a moment. Otto lifted his thumbnail to his lip and bit at it. You think if he's alive, that maybe she is too- No. Stop right there. Grumbled Otto, glaring at Sim. You need to let this go, kid. You don't need to start tormenting yourself with those kinds of thoughts. Erland is dead, and so is Arya. You and I have bigger problems on our plate right now, and we can't afford to get sidetracked. Raz is already looking for a reason to push us aside. And if you start telling everyone such nonsense, he'll write us both off as having lost our minds. But if he's alive... Enough, kid! All right! You need to keep this between you, me, and Allie. No one else needs to know about this. One word, and it'll give Raz one more reason to do away with us. Otto pointed toward the basement doorway with a frustrated expression. We haven't even scratched the surface of what that machine is capable of downstairs. For all we know, it could have been a mirage pulled from your own head into the moment. Too many trips causing hallucinations or burn images into your mind spilling out into reality. Maybe it was just an echo of it. Either way, you don't need to go slipping backwards after you just started getting over what's happened. We need to keep our attention on the here and now. Sensing his friend was still hurting as much as he was, Sim held back, not wanting to push the matter any further. All right. Good. Now, let's go eat. And not another word about this, said Otto, making his way over to the dining room. Sim followed him, feeling torn by the image of his mentor's ghost greeting him from a distance in his mind. He was positive he had seen him, and he knew he wasn't crazy. Or so he hoped. Sim stopped at the doorway to the basement. He gazed down with the vision of the Ark clear in his mind, wondering to himself what he had really seen. He was starting to gather questions. Questions now backed by a newly planted sense of hope. Or possibly, madness. Hey everyone, this is Kane Loring, the voice of Marcus from Sim Adventures Across Time. If you've enjoyed your adventure across time so far, be sure to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash tswhelan. With your support, you'll gain early access to the next chapter of the book, and even a copy of the book itself. With your contribution, more thrilling and inspiring audiobooks can be made every day through the hard work, time, and dedication of voice actors and artists all across the world, including myself, all working together. From all of us here in the world between worlds, we'd like to thank you for joining us on our adventures.